uh, expand the idea here I have for working with class tags. Now in our last class, not to be confused with class tags, but our last tutorial, we basically gave the section tag a rounded corner. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say save as. File, save as, command, shift, s, control, shift, s. We're going to save this as version 5. Now, again, to make a flexible web design, we're going to take the CSS rounded corner rules out of here. We're going to take this. This is 24 pixels of CSS rules. I'm going to click right down here and throw that particular setting in the trash. Okay, so that no longer has rules for my section. Actually, here, here, it's now gone. Make a change, save a change. So I'm going to show you a flexible way to set up the rules. Incidentally, notice that this par these series of paragraphs are basically going crashing into the side of the section tag. Now, very important step here. In our previous video, we set these sections, the section tag and the aside tag, to be percentages. So I don't want to change that setting. I want to keep that, but at the same time, I don't want these paragraphs to smash up against the end of the box, end of the section tag. Incidentally, we don't have a paragraph rule so far. So notice that all the paragraphs are cramming together. Now, the reason that that's happening is because the asterisk tag killed the space between the paragraphs. So we're gonna create a rule for paragraph. We're gonna select the P tag any p tag. We're going to select the tag, select the tag, and make a rule. We're going to be totally less specific. We're going to say, I'm just concerned about a p for paragraph tag. p for paragraph tag. I'm going to come up here and hit OK. So at the bottom of the paragraph, we're going to go to the box category, category box, and at the bottom of the paragraph, we're going to deselect margin space and do 1.5 m space and m space is equal to the height of a letter m therefore it's flexible as an example if your body copy was 10 pixels this is now 15 pixels because in em in m 1m equals the height of a capital m so therefore it's flexible so if i hit the okay button you'll see my paragraphs now have space after the paragraph where it wasn't there before okay P for paragraph by itself should go right after the body tag. Make a change, save a change. Okay, now I just want to focus on something here. Right now, the P for paragraph itself has no padding to the left and padding to the right. So in previous videos, working with div tags, fixed div tags, mean that it had a certain width, 150 pixels, 500 pixels. We're dealing with percentages here. So this aside tag is set to X amount of percent, and this section tag was set to X percent, actually 80% and 20% respectively. So I'm gonna double click the P tag, go back into the P tag, go to the box category, deselect same for all, and I'm simply gonna do padding to the right of say 0.8 M spaces. And padding to the left, the same thing, 0.8 em so what that does for me is that gives me padding anytime there's a paragraph it's going to give me padding to the left and padding to the right it's not going to interfere with the percentage of 80 percent of this particular section tag or this particular side tag now this is neither paragraph this is nothing this is undefined when when i create a div tag or an html tag the content is basically undefined it's neither paragraph it's nothing. It's nothing at this point. Now, we could do the same thing if we want. We could do the same thing with header tags. As an example, I would have a rule for header tags here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that same sequence of rules, H2, H5, and I'm going to copy that command C, copy. Not to be confused with duplicating. We're not duplicating the rule. We're just copying that to save time from typing it again. So I'm going to come down here and make a new rule for H1, comma, paste, copy, paste. Actually, while we're here, we'll do an H6 tag. I hardly use an H6 tag, but we'll put that in here, okay? 
So I'm going to set a rule for H2, H3, H4, H5. Now the spaces technically don't count. It's a matter if there's space or not, as long as there's commas here. So we're going to set this. So the box section to the left and the right, we're going to do the same spacing to the left and the right. Let's, in fact, let's do a little less spacing. We're going to say 0.5 M spaces to the right and 0.5 M spaces to the left. Therefore, anytime I have an H1, H2, H3, H6, it's going to have padding to the left and padding to the right, but it's not going to interfere with the width of that particular div tag or that particular section tag or that particular side tag. Very important to comprehend that. Okay. So how can I build rounded corners to be a flexible rounded corner for selected div tags or select HTML5 tag? The answer is class tags again. So I have nothing selected. I'm going to come down here and make a new class tag. Now, once again, if you stay in compound, you have to physically type in the period. Class tags get with the period. So we're going to go to class. Therefore, we don't have to type in the period. And we're going to do something very simple. I'm going to make RC. I'm going to call it RC for rounded corner. Rounded corner 15. And hit OK. Hit OK again. So RC, rounded corner. This is going to appear after the floats. I'm going to put this after the floats. So right float, left float. RC 15. Now, nothing's happened right here because I simply have something called RC for rounded corner 15. I'm going to go to my property palette, my, sorry, add properties down here in the CSS palette. I'm going to click here. I'm going to click the pull down menu and I'm going to type in what I typed in before, which is B O R D E R hyphen R, border radius. So, since this is called RC for rounded corner 15, we're going to make this 15 pixels of rounded corners. Okay, so here's what I want to do here. I want to have flexibility in my design. I'm going to do 15, 20, 25, and 40. 15, 20, 25, and 40 rounded corner pixels. So I can just duplicate this by control key, click, hold the menu, control click, right click Macintosh, control click, I'm sorry, right click Windows, control click Macintosh, and I'm going to call this RC20. Now, to save time here, I'm going to copy this R, period, RC. Copy, copy, Command C, Control C. So we'll set that in a second. Then I'm going to set that, duplicate that, paste, 25, return. Control key, click, duplicate that, paste, 30, return, duplicate that one more time, okay, duplicate that, paste, and jump up to 40, return. So, this is going to be 15 pixels, rounded pixels, this is going to be 20, so I'm going to click here, I'm going to change that to 20, so I can just literally type in 20, okay. I'm going to click here, I'm going to click here, and change that to 25. I'm going to click here, click here. This is a totally genius move. This is going to create total flexibility for our site. Whenever I need to change something, I can assign that class. Okay, let's make this 40. Now, if you notice here, it's the same all the way around. You can totally experiment with this. You can make the top left zero, the top right 50, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just keeping it simple. Make a change, save a change. So how do I assign that to a tag? Well, very simply, I select the tag, in this particular case, the header tag. I select the tag, I come down here to class, and I assign the tag. Now, this somebody has a class of background two. So I talked about this in a previous video. I can't assign more than one class tag using the pull down method. However, I can come to my code, put my cursor right after the first class tag, and hit the space bar. 
based on these choices, I want to give this 30 pixels of rounded corners. So I can just type RC3, RC3, types exactly that, RC3, hit the return key. How cool is that? Make a change, save a change, okay? Who said code was hard? Code is simple if you know what you're doing. So design mode, now again, you can see around a corner inside your Dreamweaver document until you either publish it to a server or go to live view. So if you go to live view, you'll see here's my rounded corner. Pretty cool, okay? Now, we don't have space after this rounded corner. We can adjust that later, okay? Just wanna share with you how simple it is to give rounded corners to things. So the aside tag, so let's select this aside class tag. Again, this already has this video has multiple classes assigned to it. From a previous video, this has the color class assigned to it. It has the left flow to class assigned to it. So there's nothing in my pull down menu here because it can't show more than one. However, I can go to my code, put my cursor right here, hit the space bar, and we can give this rounded corner 30. Let's give this rounded corner 40 just because we can. RC4, hit the return key. Control tilde, we talked about that in the previous video. Control key tilde, symbol which is the key right next to the one key, toggles between design mode and code mode. Make a change, save a change. So if I go to live, excuse me, if I go to live view, I can see there's my rounded corner. Okay, now eventually we're gonna put content there so just to keep it simple, 